Hello again everybody, this is Amergan and you're very welcome back to another community panel discussion guys and I'm joined today by Inesius and Imperial Fett to go through some of the items from the recent Q&A that Panic conducted with game designer Keenzer. So if these ideas and thoughts are reflective of what you feel guys, leave your comments below, come and join us in Discord and discuss it further and of course if they don't reflect your point of view and you have a different opinion, leave those comments below for us as well. Okay, guys, we're joined again on the panel by Anisius from Server 131. Hello. And we're joined by Imperial Fett. This is Imperial Fett from Server 23. Server 23. And lurking in the background, I don't know if he's with us at the moment, is Grimgram. Grimgram might uh, grace us with his presence at some point. Is he there? Aye. Okay. So we're going to cover some of these Q&A. It's been done already by a couple of different people. We're going to give our take on it. Um, we're looking at the first question that was thrown in um, in the Q&A that was done with game designer Keenzer and Panic. So the first question up in uh, the Q&A was, when will switching servers be available? And Keenzer seemed to indicate that uh, from past Q&A sessions, uh, they've, they've talked about it. They're reluctant to give dates. Um, and what what he's basically saying is that uh, they're in the latter stages of looking at this. Um, any thoughts on that, Anisius? Well, I think they, he says that they are um, almost releasing it because I think it will be connected to Armadas and I think Armadas will be released soon. So I think that, I don't know, if I have to guess, I would say a month or I don't know where the when the first anniversary will be uh when it's in october right amargin yeah it's, it's coming soon yeah <laughs> so <laughs> it's coming soon. no let's prepare for that so i i would say that when they make a year that would be when the first phase of our mothers would come out and then server um switching servers will be available that's okay. my my idea well based on what i saw from the the answers to these it's going to be sooner rather than later, and I guess a lot of people wanted it. I personally don't see the need, but other than other than you know a relative or a friend wants to play on the same server. Well, that let me just add that that could create some. Well, that could create the thing of having more than one account in one server, which um, which can actually uh change the game a little bit because if they're doing pvp and the two accounts are in different alliance we, you can basically do pvp with yourself so i think that that could be a little weird uh as well as uh, raiding burst events you could be raiding yourself just for your alliance to um, have more points so what i think it could do is not actually having a second account or maybe but you could also, um, you know, with Armadas, uh, change server just for doing a, like a, a PvP battle with yeah, another like the, server. Like the wormhole idea that had been talked yes. about. Yeah. Um, just uh, on switching servers, I don't know how they're going to do it with ours. Like we're in a unique position on the founder server. I touched upon this in the last founder server video that I done. Um, around the idea that we've got different mechanics when it comes to our refinery. We we get to refine multiple times, three times uh, each time the refinery is available, every 10 hours or whatever it is. And uh, as well as that, we, we're getting refinery, uh, sorry, uh, mining events for G3. So we mine something like seven or 8,000 G3 and we get something like a 20, 30,000 bonus of that G3. So that's on our server. I don't see that on too many other servers. And um, that would suggest that there'd be a queue of people like yourselves that w would be going, well, if I'm going to jump server, I want to go there. Yes, well, I'm already on your <laughs> Discord channel, so I'm I'm preparing. <laughs> I'm preparing like our mothers. Yeah, and, and I, I wonder, will they lock down our server? Um, everybody, well, everybody's going to want to be there if unless they roll it out across all servers. I would say, unfortunately, that because of, the, uh, because of those specific... Um, 
uh, specific I uh, specific uh, treats that you have that probably your server will be out of the um, of the server uh, switching unless it's just a, a, a wormhole and you and you could also mm. do that so it's not actually changing server but be able to go for a, a period of time to another server so uh, we'll move on a little bit um to can you design a place to recycle unused ship parts well i think this um we were talking about before and i if and uh, kizer said that we could give ideas about new buildings and i think we could have a building that i would call shipyard where you can you know all my turrets all my not my kira but you know my my old ships like you know, old ships, G2 ships, that you could go to the shipyard, give it back, and then uh, get the uncommon or uh, res to when you give the old ship. Mm. I would, I would, my idea was that you wouldn't get the G2 um, that you spend on the ship. Like, I, I don't need G2, okay. so I would help them to have like the choice that like uh, you want 300 g2 do you want 100 uh, g3 or do you want red so i think the shipyard would be amazing because even 26 level ships it's like the mayflower and as soon as you have 28 and 30 and and all the others you don't actually use them a lot yeah and he does suggest here that uh, the focus rather th than recycling unused ship parts is to recycle whole ships to uh, to get some value back and to provide room in the hangar. Uh, Fett, any any thoughts there from you? I'm not really sure why they would need to create room in the hangar per se, unless someone was just crazy and just built a whole bunch of smaller ships. But I can see this as being very valuable, where you can, if you do need room, but or if it's a ship like Anisia said that you, you just aren't using anymore, I have a whole fleet of them that I'm not using anymore, it would be great, especially if you can get back get back uncommons or some sort of resources that you put in there, even right. if it was a conversion rate of 2 to 1 or something like that. Right. Yeah. Uh, imagine the Envoys, Fortunates, all those ships that... Envoys, I have three maxed, so I don't use them ever. So that would be a good amount of, you know, even if it's like 50 in common or 40 in common, it's, or 20, it's still, it's better than to have them stopped in our Yeah, in agreed, our agreed. Um, and move on to the next one, guys. Uh, PVP range, why is it the PVP range so wide? Uh, a player three or more levels uh, higher is uh, unbearable in most situations. Um, and uh, game designer Kingsler says that they, uh, that they did tighten the PvP. They're studying the effect that that's had in the game. Um, they're looking at the fairness of it. Um, they want to be careful about making those changes uh, people because people have invested and all of that. And uh, they want to have confidence uh, in it before they make that change. So uh, they're saying that uh, leveling up currently the way that it is... Uh, people know what they're getting and if they're changing it now it's it's going to be unfair so uh, any thoughts on pvp ranges guys yes well he says that because he wants the whales and high level players to have someone to raid because it doesn't make any sense i have a 38 uh, player in, in in my server and he can attack 25 i think or 24 i think it's 25 that doesn't make any sense so it's just to give them fish to eat. It's uh, a, 30, a 38 should be able to attack maximum a 30, 31. And that will be, a, you know, would be okay, but but at the limit. So okay, I think- Okay, so you uh, think you think that, uh, plus minus something like level uh, eight levels? Well, it helps to level, yes. Okay. Fat? I disagree with that. Um, we have we have a couple thirty fives on my on my server, and they are they're constantly just wreaking havoc on as low as they can go. And I'm a level 
I'm a level 29, almost 30, and they they raid me. And believe me, I don't like it, but hey, it happens. Um, but I I've consistently said from the start that this should have been plus or minus two all across the board from day one. Two is yeah. a bit tight. Yes. Plus or minus two, so that you have four. You have four levels. If yeah, you're but... uh, let's just say if you're a level 30 or the highest would be if you're a level 30 you could go up to and down to okay yeah but imagine this 38 that i'm talking in my server maybe we have 236 so the guy would only be able to raid two persons and he spends a lot so scopey doesn't want that i don't think it's fair that the gap is so big but i think the reason they make it it's because they don't want to stop the progression of players that spend big time so okay yeah yeah um we have had the discussion on this before and different things and we talked about the uh, plus minus five um that used to be a thing way back in an earlier incarnation of this game um and that's been changed a number of times um could you live with plus minus five fet no 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 i would i no <laughs> i would bring that down still okay I mean, even if it was even if it was plus two minus three, that that gives that gives them someone someone to to feed upon, if you will, or even plus one, because really, who who the the player at the certain level is never going to go up. They're never going to attack up. They're always going to attack down. So uh, I, don't, I don't plus... I don't know if that's always true. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, so let's just. If you're a level 35 and you have the capability of doing so, then sure. But if you're, if you're well, level... I've joined in with my alliance, for example, and rated people 31, 32, no problem. Yeah, because you are strong 29 and you know it, and so right. But other 29s like, will as well. Usually, it's not like that. Okay, well, I suppose uh, like we're never. I don't think that I don't think the community is going to ever agree on what a, what the PV range PVP range should be. Anyway, I, I think that this is a question that'll always be on the table. You know, um, there will have to be some sort of compromise, but what what that compromise is remains to be seen. Okay, I'll move on, guys, to the divorce. Uh, why was it introduced uh, as purchase only? Uh. To get more money obviously <laughs> so i think that i have my idea about that and i think that scopely tried well a lot of players stop spending and i probably they are seeing players spending less and less that's why the packages packages are increasing no not only in number but not only in number but in value so i think that it was a uh, a form that a way that they could uh, hook 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 again the the players that uh, used to spend more and they are not spending so much anymore and even those that don't like to spend and they are not spenders but if the if it's the only way uh, I, maybe if they buy it once and they they want to buy the upgrade so it's a way of you know, uh, spending money makes you spend more money, like right. we were talking about a few days ago. And when I say that war isn't um, um, that you only can buy, which actually not true, you can buy it through credits, but it takes you 11 months. So, <laughs> right. Is... And one of the things he does say is just before I come to, to FET there, uh, one of the things he does say is that uh, they will continue to release more blueprints for the Devor uh, yeah. in events in the weeks and months to come. So there is a commitment to it. Um, yeah, how many months? Six? Well, weeks and months. You'd imagine yeah. that probably comes with Armadas and all of that as well. Yeah, yeah. FET, any thoughts? Yes, um, I bought it. I didn't like it. I used <laughs> it once. I got killed. I haven't used it since. I just think it was a, a it's a it's a one trick pony. Obviously, it's it's as Anisia said, it's some way to get get your toe back into the spending pond. And that's, uh, I mean, it is what it is. 
Right. Um, we'll see what we'll see what they do to release other 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 ways or avenues of getting getting blueprints and if those are even viable. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next one, guys. Uh, why can't we buy G3 mats with latinum? Do you want to answer? Well, uh, um, I'll, I'll, well, I suppose I'll just let you know what Keynes are saying here, that they didn't design the economy to be fluid in all ways, um, that uh, there's a distinction for resources and, uh, and what can be bought with latinum. Uh, and what can be stolen um the raw refined one since your base it can't be stolen so you know uh, he's making that distinction there and um he's talking about using and upgrading your refinery and uh he recommend you get materials a bit of an evasive answer i suppose uh events also offer them but uh, less my department per se so he kind of dodging that one um well i think that uh it's the way they have of stopping the gap between players of pay, pay players, uh, pay to play players and free to play players, because you get a lot of latinum when you buy a pack. So if you buy 10 packs per month, you will have more or less like 100k latinum. If you can, for you to buy G3, you would have to have, give the opportunity to do lower levels as well and, and to higher levels. So they would have to put them really cheap so the persons that can mine could buy but then again if you put them really cheap for that then the higher level players would not spend the money they spend because they already can buy it with the money they spend so they wouldn't spend twice if you, you know what i mean um i i think it's just a way to slow down progress because the the pretty much anything in this game is to slow player progress down including the refinery and the fact that you cannot um, latinum your way through uh, building upgrades or ship upgrades or things like that, unless you're very close to having the the quantity needed. Uh, well, in this case, we're talking about G3. Hmm. It's just a way to slow people down. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if 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 you could latinum your way through it, people would just spend a lot for packs to get to get the latinum, and then just you know <laughs> we would have servers and servers full of. 35s and 36s and 37s and so on because if you can buy g3 with latinum it means that when you buy a pack that's what i saying was double when you buy a pack you get g3 already and latinum if you can buy g3 with latinum you could buy twice the uncommon every time you get a pack so that would be an amazing uh, amazing i say amazing it's not amazing i would say it would be um uh, it, it, it like Fred was saying, would created the biggest gap because then they would they could progress twice uh, right. the velocity. Okay, and free explosive. to play would be left behind a lot more, I suppose. Is that what you're saying? Um... Yes, because it, it, they they would have to mine, and okay. if they don't pay, they would have to mine not with the Ferengi. Okay, I'm going to move on then, guys, and try to get through these. Uh, another one here saying, why don't we have the option of customizing our bases or ships? Uh, uh, so, uh, give me a pink D3, for example. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, that's what's said there. Um, but it's putting colors, skins, and that? That kind of thing. Uh, renaming ships is mentioned here. Um, well, for me, it's kind of... Could be funny, but I... I... For me, it has no interest. Fed? Uh, agreed. It has no interest for me. Um, even on consoles, I don't go for skins and other things like that. So it's it's a non-starter, really. Okay, what do you think about the idea that uh, there's money to be made by this company by selling uh, skins? Um, we talked about that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I let you make the question go, again. No, go for it. Go for it. No, because we were talking about that today. Um, me, Fat, and Taylor, Taylor Harmer, uh, we were talking about um, about skins. Ah, about the oh, it was an idea that Taylor was saying about auctions. That he was saying, oh, the um, Scopy could do auctions, uh, so people could buy the ship uh, for less than they were selling. And then I was like. Yeah, but as soon as the ship hit uh, the the price 
value hit the hit the price value of the ship, people will stop there. And he would say, yeah. And and then I had the idea. Well, unless you could make it special, like uh, se- like s- uh, selling a Sally completely red, so that would make it special. So that would completely increase the the value of the cell if it's exactly the same, just a different skin. Mm-hmm. So people can feel different and from the other players. So I think that that could be, well, you can use it in a lot of different ways, but it could be selling only the skins or making the auction of the ship or like Apple has with the hat, with the red uh, iPhone. Remember when the, only, there was only one color, the normal and the red? Yeah, yeah. Now they have and done this. They have released uh, D3s. Uh, I think it was what is it a, a green D3 that they released for winning an, an event, overall winner on your server. Uh, got them. So they've kind of they have delved very gently into that world, but they haven't started selling us uh, skins yet. Um, but well, I, the, I, 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 the hijacked was car- more or less that, right? Hijacked were reskins. All right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So- yeah. Fat, anything on that before we move on? Uh, yes, I could definitely see Scopely doing that. Uh, <laughs> releasing a skin pack or anything like that, perhaps at a at a maybe at a five dollar level, who knows? I probably just gave him an idea. But um yeah, I'll take credit for that. That's so all right. if they I could definitely see them monetizing that. They've monetized pretty much anything else. So if 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 someone wants a fluorescent yellow uh d3 or or sally or something like that you know you know yeah sure i'll pay five dollars for it yeah okay um the next one here guys is the yield rates of the refinery feel very uh, underwhelming is there any plans to increase the yield rate and uh kings are saying that they do update them they'll be increasing them again for the next mining event and uh, that'll have a bonus refinery uh, and start saving some raw. Um, any thoughts on that? Well, it's the. I think it's the most asked questions since the game began. So, I hope they do it. I, I hope. I, I actually felt the increasing rates, uh, but then it stopped because I, I did um, seventy-five k batches with all common. So. I think that increased rates will come after the mining event with hopefully the common, uh, hopefully with only the um, refinery doing uncommon and rares and also a little bit more. But you know, it's the normal question. We always, they always <laughs> give less of what uh, we want. That's usual, that's normal. Okay, Fed. Yeah, we have something on our server called uh, hashtag refinery sucks because, <laughs> you know, um, they did when they actually announced that they 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 did tweak the levels. Uh, actually, the the it it did it did increase, and then with this last update, that increase seemed to have been taken away, and yeah. it was it was noticeable. I mean, really noticeable. Everyone on our server was mentioning it. Uh, I noticed it right away. Um, so this is kind of, this is, the, to, to revisit it, to, to to do it, then take it away, like a stealth nerf, and then say in a question and answer that we're going to, we're going to revisit it again, is kind of disingenuous because they made a big to do about tweaking it when they, when they released some sort of update two updates ago. Okay, um, I suppose when it comes to refinery rates, I've already mentioned about our server and uh, all of that. Now, I suppose the, the rates are probably the same, but um, an extra refine option, I think, for everybody would uh, settle down a lot of the complaints that are out there about th- that whole refining G3 thing. Um, but we'll move on anyway. Um, the next one, guys, is when will the underdeveloped buildings like the market shield generator and sensor station be released in the game? Um, the guys are laughing at the emoji messages. Uh, they're saying that uh, some are in development, uh, some aren't so much. Um, they have plans to do a lot of work on this. Um, 
curious what people think that the sensor station will do um, and asking for other ideas for buildings that we'd like to see. So a um, little bit, a little bit of dodging the question as well, but thoughts on that? Let let Fat respond because I have I have another thing I want to show, but I have to look at. Okay, Fat. Oh well, that would be nice. Uh, it would be nice if the market was was released sooner rather than later, and then that could maybe tie in with the whole uh, recycle your your unused ship parts as well. Um, because quite frankly, that could be a form of currency as well. Um, mm -hmm. but being able to share, share, uh, resources w within your Alliance would be great. And I think the market was meant for that. There's also something about a bank too, that, that was available at level 50 and that's not yeah. even mentioned there, but that would be nice as well. To do the right, right? Give two for one and that? That's an option. Uh, I would actually like it if we could, if uh, Alliance mates could um, pool Latinum in it and use it as a pool. Oh, yeah. That would be nice. Um, well, I I thought about it and I about the buildings and I come with four buildings. One would be the portal uh, that will enable you to go to another server, Armada or not. Um, the second building will be, oh, I called it the scrapyard because it would be turn old ships into uncommon arrests, which we talk about it here. The next one will be Armada that would come as a building or a tab uh, in uh, research that would enable you to upgrade the number of things you can do with Armadas because for, well, at least in my imagination, uh, Armada will, be, will able you, enable you to do a lot of things. So uh, I think that will be a, a building like research, not research, yeah, research surrounded by other, other buildings, right? I'm not, I'm having a, like a, a mind gap, but I think it's that. And no, it's not research. What's the yeah, R and D department? Yeah, where you have the foundry and all those buildings that you can upgrade, uh, like for battleships, for explorers and yes. interceptors. So I think that will be something like that, but for our mothers. And the last one, I would like it to be well. It you have the news panel. I insist so much on a news panel, but it would be like a microphone uh, that you could message all your players or even speak to all your players using a, a third company service or something like that. So I, I, a lot of people proposed a lot of buildings. I think that, well, like maybe I, I I'm going shy on it, but the, those were my ideas. Okay, and personally, I feel the market is the one as well. Um, but we'll we'll move on from that. Um, to there's an, another question here asking when the USS Vengeance will be in the game. Any strong feelings on that? It will come <coughs> when the skins will come. Something like that. Okay. Um, Fat, anything on that? Uh, while it would be nice to see in the game, uh, I, I don't know when it will be here. I just think that if it does come, it's going to be crazy overpowered. Mm, he does say here that uh, it seems a bit bro uh, broken, so not sure if it could be a player ship, to be honest. Um, or at least an enemy ship you fight against. That seems possible too. Um, nothing major on that. Um, the next one is, are, you, are there plans to nerf the Saladin? Or bring other ships up to par. Uh, he says that uh, the combat design team is working on a rebalance uh, for a month or so to address this. Um, their goal is not specifically to nerf any specific ship, but to significantly improve the end gameish faction ship balance and ship value. You'd be hoping that'd be the auger and the like. Uh, we're testing these changes now, and uh, they want to be uh, cautious again about changes to the existing meta and that. Uh, They'll keep testing that internally. Any feelings there? 
Uh, I think that Nerf the Saladin would be wrong because people already made their path to the Saladin because it's overpowered and and you know invested in the Saladin because of that. So it would be wrong to Nerf the Saladin. But I think, I don't know if they are actually going to uh, do it with G3 ships. I think that they are, when they come with the G3, four ships i think that that those will be more balanced without an overpowered one i don't think they will do anything on the ones that already exist my idea and i think he's ruling out uh, a nerf to any specific ship there so that's good news uh, fat um i have i have heard that the saladin is 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 pretty strong by itself but then when you throw a uh, Harrison on it, it is just completely broken, and uh, so it would be wrong really to 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 nerf the ship. And I would, if anything, they need to tweak the tweak that character, that specific one that breaks the Saladin. Okay, um, well, I or... have a Saladin and I have Harrison and the Gorkin Curla set up, and I have to say I enjoy it. I, I don't think that yeah. it's. I, I I think a lot of people have it and they use it to good effect. Um, like it's it's called a critical roulette and it's called critical roulette for a reason in that you can go up against a ship and if it works out okay then uh, you'll critical hit and one shot a ship that's dramatically stronger um however if it doesn't work you'll you'll be destroyed um and i think that's a nice mechanic in a ship um and an, and an officer setup that makes that happen Yeah, I don't have either of those yet. This is again just uh, secondhand knowledge. Um, but the mechanic that you described that is clearly RNG based, and uh, that does make sense. Ignatius, I'm pretty sure you you're bound to have a, a Saladin. Yeah. And do you have Gork oh. and Kerla and Harrison? I don't have Harrison. Okay. Only okay. like four people in not in my server have Harrison, which is. So, uh, who do you use instead? Chen? No, I use Gorkin, Curla, and a Zephyr. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not a bad combo as well. And how do you find that? I love it. I love it. It's my, it's my combo like for a long time. Okay. Uh, well, I know that um, a, Zephyr, a Zephyr is a little bit um, nerfed like Chang, uh, but it's it's for me it, it works it really works okay um i'll move on to the next one guys and try to get through these uh please can we have the ability to save crew loadouts uh you mean save bridges and that so i presume that just means that when you have your as the burr gorkin and kerla uh, you save that as that ship's setup and you can just automatically reload that setup without going and having to find those officers individually. Well, I hope they do that with the whole crew, not just bridge. Exactly. Set well, set maybe five, ten different officer setups and just select them for a ship. Yeah, that would be cool because then you can have for hostile and uh, PvP. Mm -hmm. So it would be good to have two uh, saves for ship, I think. That's and and the good news is that Keenzer says he's all for that. Uh, he suffers that pain all of the time, and uh, he brought in again. Do you want ship renaming? So it's it seems like something he's thinking about is ship renaming. But he asks again about that, and uh, it would be the same development sub uh, development team that would work on that. Well, yeah, good. But ship renaming doesn't. Like I told you before, it just... It doesn't excite you? No. no That's no. okay. Uh, FET, does it excite you? Ship renaming doesn't, but I've, I've every time I fill out a survey, I've asked for uh, uh, loadout, crew loadouts. Uh, and that's exactly how it would work. You would, you would set up a card that's got your, your bridge crew and your lower deck crew, and then you can swap them, swap them at, at your leisure. Yeah. And I've... I've asked for that for a long time. Makes sense. Quality life improvement that makes a lot of sense. 
absolutely yeah um let me see i'll scroll on down a wee bit here guys on to the next one i uh, hope i didn't miss any um okay uh hijacked ships are they coming back um, and the blunt answer is yes, very, very, very soon. So what's your feelings on that? Well, they will come back when data event came back. That's, that's it. Okay. I, I, I'm not, I, it doesn't excite me, I check chips. Okay, uh, Fat? Maybe Fat has another idea. Well, uh, the mining, mining, data mining events have come and gone uh, a few times. But we've not seen a seen or heard from hijacked ships. Apparently, overnight or in the last couple of days, they snuck in a, a a blueprint pack in the store, and several of my alliance mates have gotten hijacked ships now. So it's uh, I missed out on that apparently, but uh, so I guess that constitutes as very 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 soon. Okay. <laughs> I haven't heard a lot of people talking about this. I haven't actually checked it myself. So, uh, so if anybody else uh, listening there uh, has had that experience, then uh, drop your comment below or come in the Discord and let us know, guys. We'd be interested to hear on that. Um, the next one there, guys, are there plans to create an intra-alliance trading system? I think one of you has mentioned something about that a wee while ago. Um, mm -hmm. Keynes or questions, does intra-alliance, uh, well, he assumes that it means between alliance members. A panic confirms that. And he says uh, that they, this is a design that's in progress. Um, he's asking, does, do you want te resources to teleport? He's asking, do you load your cargo ship at, the, at, at a base and fly it over your, your alliance member's base to offload your cargo to them? Um, well, this was what... Uh Fed was talking about the inter-alliance trading system that we they could use the market or the bank if I'm not mistaken. You could all, also use like um, I think Taylor was talking about it before, like a airdrop, like you approach your ship to another one and you know and mm -hmm. you can exchange uh, resources. But I think the most easy easier thing would be yeah, go to your alliance mate uh, alliance and just put the res there rather than just teleporting it rather than hitting a button and trading it to them and that's that uh, well i think that wouldn't be player to player but player to bank or market and market or bank to player okay and the um, fear of uh, the fear of your uh, miner getting attacked on route well that's the game okay <laughs> fat Uh, I could see it both ways. I I think the the uh the button to just kind of beam it over from spot to spot would be would be easier, but it would it would actually be more fun to load it up in a in a in a fortunate or something and take it to your to your alliance mate's base. I think that'd be kind of neat. It would certainly add in a new dynamic into the game anyway. Um mining agreements and uh or a way uh, would would dramatically change if that became a thing. I think. Um, we well, we, I, go on. I think you'd see a lot more hives again. Mm. Mm. You know, if if you have if 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 people if miners are getting attacked in route, then then uh, if you needed to drop your stuff off at your at your at your alliance member's base, you're either going to move your entire base. Or you're going to um, uh, see more hives, so everyone's in very close proximity. Okay. That's my take on it. Okay. One of the guys previously had a had an idea that you could um, set a, a warship to protect a miner while it's on a mine. Maybe in that such a situation, you could set a warship to protect that miner. Hmm. Um, mm. There's lots to play with on that. Uh, I want to move on That's to. That's tricky. Hey. <laughs> That's tricky. Mm -hmm. um, I want to move on to uh, an issue that they brought up, the, the question about uh, it, it finding it more difficult to get faction hostiles to do your dailies. Uh, and uh, it's difficult because there's a lot of people progressing at the same time, maybe on the same hostiles or whatever. Uh, you use finding difficulties on your servers with uh, finding enough hostiles, enough of the right hostiles, competition for, for farming them 
farming yes. your dailies and actually, stuff. Yeah. Actually, I'm seeing what um, I'm not remember the alpha alpha onions. I don't remember the the system name. It's in ROM, and they have thirty five to thirty seven explorers. And usually there's not much, but lately I see less and less. It's like where they don't even uh, how, how how you say it when they start to appear spawn spawn. They don't even spawn like before. It's it's like what where are the hostiles? Mm. But but I well yes, they should put more. If I can give a a, a, a direct answer, yes. Fat. Yeah, I've witnessed that exact exact thing. Uh, I used to hunt in Federation space and, and at a particular system, which will rename, remain nameless, and that place was swimming with hostiles. And I could complete my dailies in there, and as soon as that, the last update hit, zero. There is zero hostiles in there. Zero. I had to move to a different system. How do you go from having... 25-ish, maybe 30 hostiles to having zero ever since the last update. Very bizarre. <laughs> you didn't like it. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, the... <laughs> you, you, they, made, they made you change neighborhoods. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> right. uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on to the next one here, guys. Uh, it, it's a question about the mechanics uh, asking how, how they... Uh, ships defend uh, against a station hit uh, in wh what order do, do, do ships defend against a station hit so Keenzer basically explains that it's to do with the battle triangle uh, if you attack with an interceptor for, uh, first then uh, that'll it'll aim for the battleships uh, as its first point of attack um, then interceptors then finally explorers so uh, it goes with the ship that uh, the attack was going to be strongest against uh, mainly to do with the battle triangle obviously survey ships are going to be outside of the battle triangle uh, any thoughts on that? I think the order should be on the dock you put your ship. When I read that answer, that made sense to me. And that's actually the first time I've heard that and and realized that that's how the combat triangle works in that regard. So that made sense. Um, but I could see how people may shuffle their ships around if that's the case, because there's, there, there has to be some sort of order in dock as well. There's... I'm, I'm imagining that's programmed in. It can't just, it can't just totally rely on the combat triangle. Okay. Um, next question, guys. Why can't we repair all damaged ships at the same time? Well, the question why, it's, uh, it's not wise. I wish we could do that. Yep. Um, Keynes tries to explain that uh, if you have three dry docks uh, and could repair all three at once for the same balance, each ship would take three times longer to repair. And he asks that question, or are you requesting a repair queuing system, uh, like a repair this next button um, after the current repair is co uh, complete? Um, he's saying that opinions seem mixed. Well, I, I think a queue would be nice, but why can't we repair the ships at the same uh, uh, time uh, what, why can't we repair the three ships at the same time with the same velocity it's like what why not okay uh, fat yeah I have this I have that same that same question because if it takes if it takes in my case four and a half hours to repair a d3 and another three and a half to do a Bortas. Um, if you if you were to repair both ships at an increased rate, as Kinzer is suggesting, it could be days before they're repaired. Well, they can have a tab on, on, on research to improve mechanics. So, like, you can repair all of them in a queue, and then they have mechanics one, mechanics two, mechanics, well, two till all the docks you can have and well if you have mechanics level two you can repair two ships at the same time i think the uh, they could do something like yeah that. I, I think one of the the um the more interesting and uh i think one of the better ideas out there that i've heard is uh, that you use up a space in your hangar uh, to to put a repairing ship you put the you put the ship that needs repairing into your hangar 
and the amount of ships that you can repair is really dependent on how many spaces you've got in your hangar. You set them to the repair and they're in yeah. your hangar repairing. Yeah, the mechanics. It's like, why, why can't you have more than one place to repair a ship? Like, if you are big and powerful, you can, you are able to hire more. Well, I'm talking like it was a uh, people, but uh, you know what I mean. Okay. Um, we'll move on. Uh, there's a way to introduce in battle reports if the ship attacked was still mining or not. And Keynes are asked like if, it, if the mine was empty or when it was attacked and Panic confirms that and uh, he, he says that he assumes that this information be relative to a server or a, an alliance agreement, your ROE basically. Um, and he starts, he says he's basically going to ask how difficult that is um, to add a field battle report of how much was left on the mining node at the time of attack. Uh, it's never something considered. He's happy to investigate adding it. Um, any thoughts on that, Anisis? Well, yes, I think that uh, two thoughts on that. First, I don't, for me, it would, I, I, I don't want to know how much the mine have got left. I just want to know if it was on mining or not. Just a little red dot saying, yes, it was mining. Yes, it's not mining. And other thing that I think that could touch something is that, and that, uh, but that brings us to uh, another subject, which is the row and MA, which I hope we have, we have the opportunity to speak about, that Scopely doesn't want Scopely wants to promote um, uh, game dynamics in an organic way. So I think they avoid to have, they, they like the conflict to happen between players. So it'd be more organic and more dynamic uh, relative to power and MAs can be created. And so, but that's another conversation, but I think that could I don't know if they are really interested in things to be, you know, clear as water. Okay. Fat? Um, I really don't care whether, whether or not there was, there was resources left on the node or, or the ship was mining. I just, I just want to know who attacked me so I can either hunt them down or send them a message and say, you know, what gives. <laughs> Okay, for me, when that question was asked, I got more of the feeling that it was to relieve this issue about the state of the ship when it was hit. Um, more important to me there, I would think, would be the time stamp on it, the time that it was attacked in a screenshot. Currently, we're sharing screenshots. There's no, it's really difficult to prove when uh, it actually happened. Um, I could take a screenshot now that says that an attack happened t uh, 10 minutes ago uh, and post it tomorrow and it still shows it only only happened 10 minutes ago. Um, that can be, that can save wars or start wars, you know? Yes, of course. Uh, but that, how, we, we can think about that, but how can, can you, maybe you can put the day, you, you have the hours, can you put the day? If you put the day, then you have your day and your time instead of saying well but then you have the different time zones yeah um, well if they wanted yeah. to get really creative about it they could put on they could do their own clock in game for 24 hours and uh, have it yeah. have it like the the star date go go to the star trek star date and it's star date whatever and the time mm -hmm. in in star trek time you know um, yes anyway we're coming to the last question here guys um is there any news on changing the warp function or adding a cancel warp? That would be perfect. That that's the I think one of the first things that I missed, you know, there was a little things. One was to see how much my ship had inside, which we already have. And other thing was like, you know, you warp or, and then you, you know, make a mistake, you want to cancel and you can't. I think they should give, I don't know, one, two seconds, not much for us to, to cancel the warp. 
Fat? Not much about uh, talking about it, but yeah. I would like to see some sort of cancel warp button. Um, you have... I've noticed that each ship spools up the same. It's still four seconds, but you you know you're you're fumbling around like, oh my god, I gotta get this get this canceled, and inevitably it fails. So, uh, some sort of standalone button for cancel warp or um, some way to change that would definitely be would definitely be a help. And I might I might add that if they could somehow flip flop the recall and the warp buttons, that would be great. Okay, we've touched upon that before, all right. Um, I had mentioned previously in different occasions that uh, not only uh, changing the warp function in the sense of adding a cancel warp button, um, that that's in other mobile games regularly. It's a common feature. Uh, but also speed up transit time um, is another feature that's in a lot of mobile games. And the idea that uh, through, say, your Latinum or yeah. through your Alliance credits or uh, whatever it is, you buy an item uh, that allows you to speed up your transit by 25% or recall your 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 ships um, from whatever well, point they are in warp. Now, I suppose just to give uh, Keenzer's answer on it, he says it work is continuing on it. Um, it didn't work. They, they, they thought they'd had a solution. It didn't work from a technical point of view. He explains how the, the, the transit, the warp transit, is only a visual representation, that it's not actually happening as we watch it. Thaler has his own thoughts on that. He's disagreed. Um, so, yeah, he's saying that uh, he's, he's, he's going to take it away and look at it, basically. Um, so any final thoughts just before we, we wrap it up on any of that? Well, I think that you touched the point that I, I would like that we talked in the first panel of things that could happen. And I said, you know, about the NPC bases that you could attack and you could could have an, an, uh, an common or other res, but you also could have like special treats. One of the special treats I said was a 20, a 20 uh, tier 4 Sally could be for one hour a T8 Sally. Or like you said just now could be uh that could be a uh, power power up in uh, in velocity when you when you warp so i i think that those things those treats that you can uh, have could be win that way yeah and and i think it would be awesome if it yeah. was able i agree i agree it would excite a lot of people um mm -hmm. uh, fat any any final thoughts on any of that um I think if anything, if if really even a portion of what's on this list comes to fruition, it's going to make a lot of people happy. Okay. Um, all right. I want to thank you guys for joining me. Uh, we had a nice relaxed one here. Um, we didn't plan it too much. We jumped straight into it. So I want to thank you guys for joining me. I want to thank everybody for watching. Leave your comments below, of course, as always. Um, come and join us on Discord and you can chat more directly to some of the guys. And uh, until the next video, guys, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. And I'll catch you all again soon. Cheers.